Here's a question about simple harmonic motion, but in a very interesting setup of a metal strip. So first things first, they want us to state, by reference to the principle of simple harmonic motion, what is angular frequency? This is an old friend we have seen before in circular motion. Angular frequency is the symbol omega. There's not exactly a word equation, but there is an equation for this. It's not a word sentence, sorry. I meant that omega is 2 pi f. Or you can say 2 pi over t. Either one works, right? So since there's no particular definition, we're going to talk about that equation we just wrote up there. So we can say that angular frequency is 2 pi times frequency. Or if you would like to say in terms of period, then you have to say 2 pi over or divided by the period t. One full cycle. So this is two possible ways to talk about this definition. So if you ever forget, like, I don't know what the definition is, just talk about the equation. So here's our metal strip clamped on one end and it goes oscillating. You can do this experiment at home, by the way. All you need is a ruler and pluck the ruler and you see the ruler goes. And we have a nice graph that goes with it. So load is displaced. Where's our load? Okay, the load is pulled down and it starts to oscillate. Variation with acceleration of the displacement is shown. So this displacement, no, even before you make it oscillate, it's already heavy, it already will bend down. So actually, this is the equilibrium position right here. Now let's look, well, let's take the top of the thing here. Okay, so this is equilibrium. It already has some displacement S. Then we pull down, it oscillates. Ooh, what's this graph? S against acceleration. Hmm, nice. Well, what do they want us to do with this? So use the figure to determine, number one, the displacement of the load before it is made to oscillate. It means you just hang it there. Got displacement? Got. Already got. Look at this. So here you just, by having a load, because this is heavy, uh, there's some kind of gravitational force pulling it down. But there's also a restoring force due to the spring-like nature of the strip. So there's also some kind of, let's call this restoring force, spring-like force. This system is actually very similar to a spring. The equation, you can use the same time, like f equals a kx kind of system, behaves like a spring. So before you hang anything, uh, before you oscillate, there's already the displacement s and how much is that. So at this equilibrium position, you can say that the net force is zero. No force, ma, right? You're not going being pushed up or down. Or you can say because the force is zero, acceleration also zero. So then we look at this graph here. Where is acceleration zero? Right here. Because this is the acceleration axis. So then you trace all the way up and say, okay, at zero acceleration, I think we want to look at this right here. So this is 2cm displacement at acceleration. You know what? Let's label it out. Equilibrium, right? Okay, equilibrium. Here is equilibrium. Very much like how you would have a spring already hanging on a mass at equilibrium, but the spring is already stretched. Okay, I think we write 2.0. Okay, let's write 2.0. That's the initial displacement. So here, 2.0. Then we need to find the amplitude of oscillation. Amplitude here refers to the maximum displacement. But from where? That's important. From equilibrium. There we go. So we need to see from the graph how to find that. Let's go over to the graph. So if we treat this like a spring, you can see along the vertical axis or how high can you go? You go up pretty high actually until this displacement. What is that displacement? 3.5. Okay, that's 3.5. So the maximum you can go is 3.5 cm. Equilibrium is 2.0. Lowest, what's this? This is 0 0.5. Okay, so minimum, the lowest displacement from the top. 0 0.5. So what's the displacement? 
please don't forget displacement is from equilibrium you go up this not displacement amplitude sorry this is our amplitude so we're going to take 3.5 minus 2.0 ah this one on uh, a small little trap here okay please don't forget the amplitude so let's write what is 3.5 minus 2.0 that would be on this end. 3.5 minus 2.0. Ooh, we have a color change. 1.5 cm. Okay, so train yourself to read the graph, especially when you have tricky displacements like this. This displacement from the top, uh, okay, this S here, this is going to be our 2.0 cm. Initial, before you start oscillating, I guess, up and down. Here's one mark. Here's another one. A1, A1. Part 2. Show that the load is undergoing simple harmonic motion. From what? From the graph. The only clue we have here is our graph. But what is simple harmonic motion? You need to remember that we looked at in a previous theory video that there is one general pattern of simple harmonic motion and that is if you want to say a system obeys simple harmonic motion, then it must be acceleration proportional to negative displacement. Okay, and based on this relationship, if you draw a graph of, let's say, acceleration against displacement from equilibrium, uh, this x, then your graph must be like this. Straight line. Ah, yeah, I didn't draw a straight line. Okay, let's draw a straight line. Here we go. But the question is, is our graph like this? Maybe. Let's check. Is it a straight line? Yes. Does it start from zero? No, but our equilibrium is actually here. Let's call this our x equals to zero. x for, you know, displacement. But I changed to x because this is where we start. And we oscillate up and down. So actually, it does follow simple harmonic motion. Amplitude is the same on either side. Okay, we go up. 1.5, come down, 1.5. All right, so let's talk about how to convince this question that you are going under simple harmonic motion. Let's talk about the displacement first because our graph is a bit different here. Our graph is actually S against acceleration and S is kind of like an offset. So we're going to have a graph like this. But don't forget, we start off displacement 2.0. That's our x equals to zero. Equilibrium position. So yeah, I can say it, it obeys. So let's start with displacement first. So number one, we say that displacement from equilibrium, equilibrium is 2.0. Oh. Let's just write here, 2.0 cm should is, sorry, proportional to acceleration if load is in simple harmonic motion. I kind of shortcut here a bit because there's a lot of stuff to write. Okay, so we kind of state very clearly displacement from equilibrium, which is 2.0. That means I kind of adjust or account for this intercept and I kind of shift the axis up a bit to say oh actually x is there you know this is our 2.0 cm zero displacement from equilibrium from equilibrium then next we're going to talk about the straight line is it a straight line yes it's a straight line so we said the obvious thing so the straight line what does that tell us is it curve got change in gradient no so the straight line indicates the relationship which is the one we just said up here Indicates the relationship between acceleration and displacement from equilibrium. Okay, this is from equilibrium. Not S, but X. Uh, I think, what else do we need to say? Oh, the negative sign, right. We talk about displacement. We talk about proportionality. We need to talk about negative sign. So negative sign means uh, one of the coordinate must be negative. If I take, let's say, point x here, one of the coordinate is negative. So we can talk about that by saying the negative gradient going down. Uh, gradient 
shows that acceleration and no more space displacement when you see a negative sign it means they're in opposite directions so you say are in opposite directions man this is a long sentence about it's three marks we want to write as much as we can to make sure we hit the points so first thing you want to talk about displacement from equilibrium which is our recalibrated as x not s x so this one proportional to acceleration this is the first one then you talk about the evidence that we have a straight line what does that mean indicates the relationship so if you talk about straight line and say hey straight line means a proportional to x the gradient that's the last thing you talk about and it tells us that negative gradient uh, is opposite direction also that's all talking about our general formula for simple arming motion so this is the last one talk about gradient okay so now we have the simple harmonic motion equation in our brains we need to calculate the frequency of oscillation of the load so the full pattern is actually acceleration equals to some constant we call it omega so negative times some constant omega squared x we choose square for convenience because it's a bit more easier because got square root later so omega squared is our constant when we move from proportionality to an equation for simple harmonic motion from the graph though how do we find frequency mm, there's no frequency here oh no oh wait 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 remember this omega from circular motion omega they asked us earlier in the first part it's actually 2 pi times f so if i can find the omega i can find the f aha so maybe from my graph the one where i have s over a or i can find displacement over a i can probably find the graph i find the grade find the omega so let me rearrange this first I think I will put x on one side equals to mm, negative 1 over omega squared times a. So my y-axis is this, my x-axis is here, and this is like a straight, straight line equation, y equals to negative mx. Remember, remember the straight line equation? So from here, I can say that the gradient of this graph this graph on the left side will be this 1 over omega. So I'm going to write the next sign. Hence, also, gradient of graph equals to negative 1 over omega squared. So if I can find gradient, I can find the omega. Very good. Okay, let's find the gradient. Let's go to the graph. So if you're, the, if you're doing this question along with me, highly recommend. Try find the gradient. Your values will probably be a bit different. I'm just going to choose two points to find my gradient. I think I like, I think I like this one. So I'm going to draw a triangle here and say, hey, here's my right angle triangle. First point up here will be negative 0 0.6 comma 3.0. Hey, remember this is in CM. Ah. Must convert later. And the other points down here is 0. I like 0, so I chose that point. 0 on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, you have 2.0, something right here, 2.0. Okay, so let's take those points and plug them inside our gradient equation. You choose different points, you will have different values, but you should get the same gradient at the end of the day. I chose this point because they nicely intersect right at the cross line. So it's I'm very clear that these values are correct. If you choose this last point up here, it's a bit not at the corner of the box so it's not a good practice to choose those points for paper three or paper two or anything in general so gradient we got here this is going to be our what's gradient ready uh? oh delta s over delta a you know throw back to delta y over delta x normally how we find the gradient right gradient triangles so let's plug in all the values down here based on my points that i got Mine will be delta S over delta A will be 2 minus 3 times 10 to a negative 2. I do that because there is a prefix I need to account for. You see this 
centimeter. This centi is times ten negative two. So I take two. The second point, y two minus y one, two minus three. Okay, can already continue. Over second acceleration, x two minus x one. So x two is zero minus negative zero point six. Let's write that down. So here will be negative or zero minus negative zero point six already in meters per second. This is in meter. This is in meter per second. This will equal to negative one over omega square. Whatever value you choose, you should get omega square equals to sixty. Should get ah? You try and see. But we're not done yet. We need to find our frequency. So our frequency is the next part. So now we have 2 pi f square equals to 60, which I take from down here and just continue up here. And that will be 4 pi square f square equals to 60, giving me a frequency of 1.2328. You check and see whether you got that. So for the final answer on the answer line, I can choose to follow the least sf of the values given to me. Whoa, what does that mean? What values are given to me again? Uh, 0 0.6. Actually, this is 2.0, 3 .0, 60. Mm. I'm going to stay with 2SF then. Because a lot of these values are in 2SF. So generally, 2SF is a safe and okay choice. 2 or 3. So yeah, this is 1. One mark comes from if you knew that the gradient is related to omega. So this part. This is C1. Or if you wrote somewhere that uh, you have omega square equals to delta A over delta S, which is the gradient. If you got right negative, okay. If you didn't write negative, it's also okay. They put in bracket means you don't need to write negative, also okay. They are generous. Uh. Then if you plug in the correct values, where is it? Uh, to get 60. Okay, so this part. If you had to show you got 60 or plug in your values, substitute. Values in, correct, and you get final mark. Okay, so this one, two, three marks. Side notes though, this question is a pretty interesting one because it asks you to analyze a graph. And remember, uh, what is a simple harmonic motion graph? Because you need to know that. But in case you come across other kinds of graph in the future where it is not simple harmonic, here's one example of it. This is a acceleration against X graph. You, do you see something weird about this graph or not? The I mean, the two points from the mark scheme are already down there. But this is actually not simple harmonic motion at certain places. Or you can say this oscillation is something wrong already. First problem. You see this, uh, it's not exactly a straight line. It's a bit curved. And that same thing goes for, I think, down there also. Something is wrong here. If you look carefully at the graph. So that is the first one where you have this problem. Graph is a curve, not a straight line. And that is the relationship of a proportional x not satisfied. So it's not simple harmonic motion. Second problem, maximum displacement or accelerations are different. So that means on one side of the graph, oh, you come until this acceleration. Maximum displacement, which is here. Max displacement. Acceleration is pretty high up. On the other side though, your acceleration goes until so big. What is happening? Asymmetrical graph, which is not sub simple harmonic motion should be symmetrical on either side. So something's wrong here. Your system is not simple harmonic motion. So be careful when you come across graphs, they will ask you to explain. You need to know how to do that. Okay, so that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.